Continuing the conversation. This is what my project is. Getting a magic device, an easy spray atomizer, and getting this laticane that either we have in our pharmacy or order it online to topicalize patients to, for an awake intubation. But my plug in this, and I love how Revly M uh, gets this set up uh, by Salim. Is that Reza of uh, San Antonio, Texas? But I would probably add some pictures to this with what you're going to use, whether you're going to debate through the nose, and this is probably all I do orally, but I would probably use devices that I'll be showing you soon uh, regarding uh, a Rotex device and a Williams device. I don't like the oversape in that well, uh, but I do think with devices that help you avoid touching the mucosa and secretions onto the fiber optic scope will aid you in intubation. So these devices are like these. So this Rotex device, not a condom, a Rotex device, Rapid Oral Tracheal Intubation Guidance uh, System is by an ENT in Hawaii. Very smart man, talk about instructions. This is for oral intubations. They come in small and medium. Now the one I had fell apart, so I had to reattach it. Um, no, I didn't have to reattach it. This is the one that's in, in its actual healthy state. Um, it's meant for one-time use. Use it like a bite block, put it in the patient's mouth, and this opens up to accommodate for uh, the sizes of tubes that you're trying to push in through, uh, push through for intubation. So the key is keeping off the uvula and the soft uh, tissues in the back, because that's the part that's gonna cause and initiate a gag. But this device, I would actually incorporate. If you don't, you can go real old school use a Williams device that I see in my screen further up and this accommodates an ET tube all right you're limited to the size of the lumen of the tube but remember you can only switch out with the bougie later on and to the mouth the fiber back to wind I would be uh, almost forced to tilt all the way upwards to guide to where you need to intubate so device like this or this would be what I had to add to an airway intubation. Okay, so this is where the two fiber optic will come out, but this is how you insert it in the mouth, like a bite block. This would not work for an angioedema. So, and another thing is I'm gonna also educate with those devices over there. An air cue, gastric blocker, uh, LMA su, uh, protector, iGel, and the device that's the Aura Gain. Uh, oh no, the Aura One, the one uh, model that existed before the Aura Gain. This one does not uh, allow for gastric uh, suctioning, but it will be ideal for intubations up close. Very nice, plastic and silicone. Allows for a gastric decompression through here and here. All right, and these are what you would probably consider at least uh, second degree, and some would argue third degree LMAs, supraglottic devices. Allows for gastric uh, diversion or decompression. It may, not, it may not allow Salem sump, but it'll be allow, allow the, a no war sized uh, suction catheter, or maybe a size 14 suction catheter through the side. But this is uh, allows you to intubate a built in bite block, size 4 LMA. This one does not allow for gastric uh, decompression, which is uh, its, its downside, but it has a nice mark right here that tells you at the tip of my finger you're right the right place if you have this inserted correctly in the airway to so look up and you'd find your cords this does have a black box which is good but 
and it adds a marker and reminds you of the size of the ET tube you can allow to intubate, 7.5. Alright, Or again, I have to get another size 4, allows the gastric uh, suctioning, the compression, it will be at the tip. Don't have the device right now, but this may be ideal for intubations. This door again has a gastric blocker that you can allow the device that it comes with to be put in or a salem set to go down once you have it in correctly. And it has rigidity so it prevents kinking and flexing of the LMA from preventing intubations. All right? And it has a small ramp. So when you have it in, it ramps up. And depending on how it's inserted, if it's inserted correctly, it may guarantee easy intubations with the fiber optic scope. And thankfully, this is updated with this attachment because I remember the first models didn't have this. This would fall off and hit the floor and ricochet everywhere like a rocket. You have to remove that to allow the intubation with an ET tube that's been lubricated. Okay. And then the last device after their air cue by Mercury is an eye gel. Now, this device you can intubate through. It's a little sticky. The lumen is kind of wide. Maybe it'll fit in a 6.5 or 7. 7.5 will be kind of tight. All right. But this device can be used for intubating. It's been studied. It's not promoted for intubation, but you can, as a doctor, wisely use the device correctly for intubations. Now, a device like this, I don't think would fit around someone with angioedema, but a device like this probably would fully decompressed this is lubricated this can slide through very tight confined spaces and less likely this would pass as well okay things to consider all right so next video showing me will have me uh, intubating someone with fiber optics on a patient upright the only time I would actually consider intubating someone lying flat, like this person up here, would be after a failed intubation, rescue intubation with an, uh, a supergalactic device like an LMA. He's already supine, he's already paralyzed. Why not? I pre uh, oxygenate him, oxygenate him up after a failed attempt, and hey, consider intubating through these intubating LMAs. Won't hurt. Hopefully, the LMA will um, divert gastric juices, blood, secretions away from the, the vocal cords, the glottic opening, and allow intubation, perhaps. But ideally, I would try to intubate people nasally or orally. Okay? So, next video will be showing me intubating with fiber scope.